Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I stumbled upon the most amazing slow motion optical flow-like software ever. It's called Flow Frames. All right, so this is Windows only, but hey, if, if you're a Mac user and you need slow-mo, find someone with a Windows computer and run flow frames. Now, Twixtor has been the king out there. Twixtor is a third-party tool and it's been doing amazing optical flow. Uh, Premiere Pro has its own optical flow that kind of works sometimes. But the problem with optical flow is called occlusion. So optical flow takes one pixel and then it looks at where that pixel goes, maybe the camera is moving or the person's moving, and then it, it, it draws a vector, it draws a location between those two pixels. And if there's nothing moving in front called occlusion, then optical flow, even in Premiere Pro, works pretty darn good. The problem occurs when something moves in front of something else, and that'll occur not with a pan so much as a dolly. So if the camera itself is moving its physical location and not just rotating on a single point, or if somebody walks in front of someone else. So I used a, a basketball game because there's arms and legs and the ball and the camera's moving to really push it. And you'll see how much optical flow in Premiere Pro completely falls apart, but Flow Frames doesn't. So I'll have a link. Here's their, the site where you can download it. Um, it's through Patreon, so you can name your own price. There's some examples in here. They're always updating it. And I'll show you what it really looks like here. It's, it's um, so this is the interface. It's pretty simple. There's a welcome screen here, and you basically tell it um, what method you're using. Now, I didn't experiment too much with, with the methods. I have a kick-ass RTX 5000 card in my uh, Dell 7740 um, mobile workstation. It's a monster. When I had it on a default setting, it took 30 minutes, and then I had it on a different setting, and it took a minute and a half. <laughs> And the results were incredible. Uh, so you, you basically pick um, the interpolation method. This is the important one down here. If you don't change this from normal speed, it, all it will do will be to add frames. And this is what gamers like a lot of, that when they've recorded something at 30 frames a second and they want it at 60 or 120 frames per second, you can do that here. It's still the same real-time motion, but for me, I want slow-mo. So in here, I choose two times slow-mo, and this will change once you pick the, the uh, file you're using, and then you pick the location where it goes, and then you hit the interpolate button, and off it goes. Now, I want to show you, I just took a, a couple of uh, screenshots, and but look at the GPU usage. 100% GPU usage. Do you see that anywhere else? No. Even with something like CUDA inside Premiere Pro, you never really see it topping out. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just a thing, but look at this. Flow frames, it just maxes out the GPU, which means super fast rendering, because I have a powerful GPU. And this is the, the summary. So this is one of the earlier ones I did, and you can see total processing time there is 30 minutes. So this is not a real-time effect. You're not about to turn on flow frames and it's magical. And optical flow isn't even on um, automatically. You, you have to render optical flow in Premiere Pro. So I'll show you what I mean in, in this clip here. Optical flow is turned on, the speed is, is 50%, but if you look, there's the same frame right there. There's that frame. Then there's the same frame. It's just, if you go to time interpolation, it's frame sampling for a preview. Optical flow has to be rendered. So if you've ever turned on optical flow and wondered why it doesn't work, it has to be rendered in the timeline in Premiere Pro. You have to hit optical flow and either export a file or render the timeline. So get used to that. You have to render. So here is a comparison. So like I said, let me just show you the basketball game um, that I use. So this is a real-time shot 
lots of occlusion. We've got people, arms, the post moving in, the goal, the camera is flying all around. So there, as the software is trying to predict where a pixel is now and where it's going later, there's all these things going in front of it. And that's where uh, you can have error show up. So here I've marked a whole bunch of places in comparison of where optical flow failed and flow frames rocks. Ready? Let me show you this. So let me jump ahead to the first one. And here you can see, look, look at the, the feet right here and look at this. So optical flow has a, a huge problem with blurs. Look at the, the motion blur here on the ball, which is accurate. And over here, it starts to break up. It gets even worse. Now you can see there's a little bit of a problem here, but nowhere near as big of a problem as we have here. And you can even see the jaggy edges inside there. Let's go to the next one. Starting to fall apart here on the arms. It's falling apart on the hand, on the pants are flapping around. There's a little problem here with flow frames. Look at this. This is where, this is a huge challenge. So I wanted to find something with, with occlusion like crazy. So all these thin lines here in optical flow are just breaking up and falling apart. Still breaking up here, but nowhere near as bad as this. Here we go again. Optical uh, flow frames, this has a bit of a problem, but huge problem. Look, look at the fabric here as it's moving. Wow. Again, more problems with occlusion, more problems with motion blur down to the bottom. More occlusion problems and more motion blur problems. So I think you get the, the picture. Oh, yeah, let's go back to that one. Look at that. Look at that. This is a really typical problem of optical flow when it's done incorrectly. This problem is part of the prediction from one frame to another. And optical flow is thinking, well, the hand was there and then the hand isn't there. So maybe there's a hand in the middle. Well, there isn't, as you can see properly in flow frames. And again, here, look at the blur of the ball. Beautiful. Over here, what a mishmash of yuck. Again, more problems with occlusion. Like, what is this? That is a mess. All right. So I also did a uh, full frame version so you could see that. And again, you can see the optical flow issues. And what I found interesting was when I had the bars come in front, this bar here, watch this. As this moves in front and behind this thin line, so we've got this occlusion going on here. And what I think Flow Frames does a good job of is finishing the operation quicker. So you can see here, Flow Frames is treating that almost perfectly, and yet optical flow is still breaking up. This is after it's passed, and shouldn't it Shouldn't it know? I mean, look at this. Why is it holding on? Why is optical flow still predicting a motion that's going this way where it's still affecting things behind it? It shouldn't. As far as I'm concerned, the algorithm should say, well, if, if I've passed my occlusion, everything over here should not be touched. Don't interpolate that with, with whatever that occlusion is in mind. So bottom line is, holy smokes. Freaking incredible. And even if it does take you 30 minutes or an hour to output this file, you're gonna have something, in my opinion, that rivals Twix Store or blows it away. Now, are we gonna have a Mac version of this? Imagine this on an M1 chip, sweet mama. That would be pretty fast, but reach out. There's, there's people on Discord. Um, like I said, I'll put the links to everything so you can check it out. But you're on Windows, download this, play with it, try it out. I'm sure it's gonna blow your mind. I'm never using optical flow again. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more or support Flow Frames, you can do that. You can support us on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount, bunch of free stuff that you can download in the member section. 
Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to poke around out there and find some new technology that I know is going to blow you away. 